so these are the two more r's which we need to learn and comprehend which is the right to information and right to uh, no, not right to but right information and right system okay. because this is quite very prevalent in the current generation all right current era not generation so this is what we had learned last origination point of consumption then we had also understood with the help of an mr example which is the mrp of cold drink okay what is the amount what you are actually paying and what is the actual cost of the day drink then we understood the dmart model okay uh, specifically why i consider dmart or supermarkets is because so that you are able to know that you will be able to save much more if you follow this model and if you follow this practice so i gave you an example of that okay uh, is good that during the pandemic you are purchasing doing a planned purchase if you continue this planned purchase behavior okay, you will be able to save at least around 20% okay and then we saw the the stock market the same value of dmart as well okay so there is where we have seen that if you if you save that much amount of money and if you invest in shares okay you would have become rich so the usp of dmart which is a multi 2 liter packs and a lot of other material which are available in bulk packets so if you say if, if in confectionery items like say uh, crack jack monaco uh, parle ji britannia okay the bulk packets are available okay so the bulk containers okay bulk packets are available with bulk con bulk uh, with the, these wholesale shop and carry uh, cash and carry outlets okay so these are nothing but wholesale cash and carry business do you remember wholesale cash and carry method i have exposed you to that as well so that's a technical term again all right then we spoke about uh, the costing the intermediaries of a supply chain all right supply chain moves from left to right information flows across the supply chain from all directions plus anything which is coming behind in the supply chain is known as reverse logistics we have understood the definition of reverse logistics as well then we have vis a vis understood through mathematical calculation in terms of what is the costing for all of the supply chain intermediaries all of the supply chain intermediaries are we clear so profit in a supply chain 15 to 30% which aryan hinted at all right yes so there is what we have covered last recording last class recording is available on youtube and this is a link for youtube our session 1 is uploaded recorded and uploaded on youtube you can follow this link okay in case if you like what you are learning please like of course press the bell icon as well all right <laughs> then we have also understood in terms of how medical shop owner operates what are the benefits so what we had learned since you were the first division we came in the, the the next sheet what we devised with the help of the other division okay i have changed certain points okay so if you order 10 straps then this is is the extra strip what you are getting if you are ordering 20 strips okay then three strips extra what you get if you order 40 strips you get 10 more strips okay and visa is the costing okay if the mrp of the cost of one strip is 10 okay the revenue what the person will generate out of the sale of this will be this which is 20 into 10 right 40 into 10 all right the retail price is 8 rupees okay so the cost to the retailer is what this much all right so profit is this much but the actual extra strip profit is this much are you understanding this so the total profit will be this so no rocket science right it's quite very easy any query over here please ask any query over here please ask have any query please ask
I'm purposefully quite very particular with certain things. That's the reason why I'm investing time. All right. So today is 24 June, and uh, we are in the second session of logistic supply chain management for TY BMS. We have already done a quick recap, okay, of what we have done last time. And today I'm going to introduce you to certain new more things. Okay, I've been always telling you that please try to upgrade yourself again and again. All right. So it's, it's a matter of time. You need to spend some uh, some of your time, okay, upgrading yourself. Because if you get that extra skill, okay, which an organization is looking out for, then you are easily employable, okay, easily employable. So the you, the idea is to differentiate yourself from the herd, okay, stand out. How you will be able to stand out is as for me, I stand out from the rest of my peers or colleagues. By doing certifications or upgrading myself. So as of now, I'm also learning about masters of yoga, which is masters in yoga shastra. Okay, which I'm already currently doing in clear kind of in part one, semester two. Next year I'll be completing that. Along with that, I'm also aligning myself for certification of PMP, which is project management. Okay, which is I remember I told you when we had taken the placement session, the top ten. Uh, careers which will be still in demand, okay, and out of which PMP is at the the project management at fourth level, fourth level, all right. Project management practices is at fourth level, all right. Then courses on Swayam. So one course which I would want you to do is on op operation and supply chain, which is from IIT Madras and in PTL, okay, which is a free course which is there on Swayam platform. Okay, I'll show you where is. Okay, the reason why I'm investing time and effort in this is because I would want you to do these courses and get some niche. Here, okay, I will enroll for this course. Okay, this course specifically, if you would see, okay, is being done given by I trust professor. These are the course layout. Okay, book references, the certificate. Okay, the certificate will have the logo of IIT Madras and NPTEL along with your photo. Okay, whatever you will be uploading while registering on Swayam. The cost of this exam is only thousand rupees. Okay, so technically, if you go to learn this course from any MBA college, okay, then you will be spending good amount of money. Okay. The date and the exam, uh, the time of the exam is already decided, which is 23rd October. Okay, there are two sessions which you can register for. In case if you want to register for the exam, then you'll have to pay. But without appearing for the exam, you will not get any certificate. All right. The criteria to get a certificate. Okay, there is an assignment which is like an objective exam. I'll show you the objective exam. Okay, it's quite very easy. Out of the material which is already being taught to you. Okay, from that it will be asked. That's 25%, and then 75% will be the online proctored exam. Okay, proctored exam is like the, the exam which is quite very strict. You are not supposed to look over here and there. The moment you look over here and there, your session, your attempt will get disqualified. Okay, and it will be there at their exam center. Okay, under camera supervision. You will be eligible for certificate only if average assignment score is 10 out of 25 and 40 out of 100. Okay, total score. Is that clear? 
So this week zero, I'll show you. There's an assignment. Okay. See, something like this assignment will come in. Can you see that? The last date for this assignment is 26th July. Can you see that? Okay. So that is one. Okay. So you need to do this course. I don't want to keep it mandatory as of now. I would urge you to do it. And believe me, it will really help you. By the time the companies will come up, you can showcase this certificate and say that okay, you have done this. So automatically, companies, MNCs, pick up individuals something like this when they see that the the individual has an extra edge, okay, or a skill which is differentiating from that person from the crowd. So be a differentiator, okay. Create difference in your life. That's important. All right. So that's one. All right, let's come back to our curriculum. Now we need to also know and understand what are, why is the term logistics which is being used? We, the, the subject is logistics and supply chain management. You have understood the supply chain, okay? But what is logistics? Logistics in reality is known as movement, study of movement of material. But how does it come in? Okay, if you are able to see on my screen, if you are able to see on my screen. Okay, I'm going to increase the size of this picture. Okay, is the study of logs or movement of logs or material? Okay, if you might have seen in the earlier days, the civilization days, where logs or wood was specifically being procured from the forest and stored. The reason is why because wood is specifically being used for what purposes? What are the two purposes where wood is specifically wanting to be used? please put it up in the chat box i'll come in a minute okay give me a minute let me know the usage of in the chat box Yes, wood is specifically used for primarily, as rightly pointed out by Satya, okay, by for fuel, okay, burning, burning of wood. The most important usage of wood is very rightly pointed out by Yuvraj, construction and fire, okay, making paper, which came in quite a little later. The next part, what you have answered is furniture, which is really nice, okay, house. Making of house, house and construction. Okay, so that's the most important usage of wood. So wood was being procured earlier, and they used to observe that logs of wood were lying, okay, on the shores of sea, or uh, sorry, on the rivers, on the river sides, not sea, okay. But when they tried to found found out in terms of how this is specifically can be procured, they found that the logs of wood are actually floating on the river. and they are coming from up in somewhere in the hilly areas from the hilly areas so what they did is they started cutting off the trees on the top of the mountains and they just slide that log of wood across the river and catch that log okay at the place wherever downstream where they would want to use it for consumption so that is how the movement of wood came in okay the movement of logs all right but this was not quite very easy you should take good amount of time if the log would actually uh, kind of get stuck in between during its journey downstream so what they did is they actually invented something like this the movement of logs with the help of animals or it's known as sledging so there is where they came on now with a with with the idea of movement of these material okay so that is known as logistics all right now these logs of wood will have to be would have to be stored for good amount of almost around 9 months the reason is why because certain areas were uh, snow packed covered with snow and during this point period it's very difficult to procure wood okay so that's the reason why it was being procured in summer season or at least in mid uh, spring season 
or reason so that this wood could be procured and stored dried and then could be utilized so whosoever had the largest amount of warehouse or the place to store okay they would actually store that wood okay store the wood in warehouses so there is where you now know that okay how supply chain concept came in so the concept of storage of wood okay and movement of this wood across intermediaries uh, traders okay for its usage that is how the concept of supply chain came in. are we clear So you have seen this, and you have seen this last time also. Supply chain, all right. Now this is the end consumer, okay. This is a manufacturer. But believe me, as of now, what you are seeing in front of you, there is no manufacturer, okay. These are the raw material suppliers. So it means there is a part of supply chain which we have still not covered. So what you are seeing in front of you is the supply chain part which is flowing downstream. Which is from the manufacturer to the consumer, but there is a part of supply chain, okay, which is coming in from the suppliers, okay, till the manufacturer. So that's known as upstream. Is that clear? So that is being scripted in front of you. So the part of supply chain which is from raw material to the manufacturer is known as upstream, and the part of supply chain which we had learned last time from the manufacturer to the end consumer is known as downstream. Have you understood this? So again, I'm doing one more technical term today. upstream downstream will you remember this yes or no kindly give me a confirmation on the chat box is it very easy <coughs> yes all right cool thank you let's go ahead next so i'm giving you two images one is this okay let me point it out and give some okay so differentiated to it so that's one and the other image which is there which is the diagram which i have used in my presentation okay so i'm going to give this also some color so that you are able to render it quite very easily okay all right so that's the upstream okay however the flow of in the flow of material is actually happening this way okay supplier sub, so these are tier 2 suppliers this is tier 1 supplier and then this is manufacturer so i'll give you an example say for example okay you are the manufacturer tata motors okay you are manufacturing cars so this is you as manufacturer you will be now see every car has basically how many tires can you please ask tell me how many how many tires are there in a car hello class query query time four think about it only four there is always a reserve tire which is always there who is going to count that so there are major five tires which are fitted in every car the stepney tire which is all which is there inside always as a reserve tire okay so the five tires so if you are going to manufacture okay a manufacturer so every car will require five tires so if you are going to manufacture 1000 tires 1000 cars okay in a particular month so you require how many tires 5000 okay so manuf as a manufacturer tata does not usually manufacture its own tires what does it do it give it gives take gives a contract in terms of outsource supplier this supplier is quite very smart it does not manufacture everything what does it do it just does the assembly okay takes a contract of assembly all right so the tire the tube the tire is being given by one supplier which is mrf the metal the alloy wheel is being given by another supplier so say tata steel okay the nut bolts are being given by another supplier so this supplier procures all of these raw material from from them assembles it out over here okay at this stage and then gives it to the manufacturer so he, what is this supplier doing 
the supplier is assembling the tires okay through different raw material suppliers okay and then giving it to the manufacturer all right so that is that clear funda clear hai is the concept clear give me an affirmation please this is very important huh? i am spending good amount of time on it giving uh, explaining this with the help of an example okay if you have not understood anything during our discussion please raise it we are okay to spend time on concepts because later on when i will be doing some case studies i am slated to do start with one case study today okay all right cool thank you bansi thank you friends tanvi rish harshita jay aryan so nice of you to respond okay on the chat box all right so this is important so we have covered upstream and downstream now is the time for apl logistics okay so this is american president lines and this is how where you know see our first case study in terms of how transportation of material is specifically being done the reason why i have selected this case study is because across everything okay now we are a class of almost around how many 60 students but out of which as of now 40 oh wow 52 students are there online okay now all of you are using cell phones laptops for accessing this lecture and you are located in your own house your house is consisting of or uh, kind of uh, having different types of material which are being procured from different sources okay so for example if i take the example of your mobile phone or your laptop which is sometimes not made in india it is coming in from outside so how it is how is that being shipped we are going to see that all right so the journey from the point of origination to the point of consumption now you know that what is logistics what is supply chain now we are going to expose ourselves to some more technical terms with the help of this case study all right now during the video i would want you to note okay some words international transportation double stack containers where they are used okay roads railways i'm going to introduce you to them international sea routes okay these are the international sea routes how the material flow okay we're going to speak more on this also okay so what is the material which is coming forward okay there are some resources for that this is already being formatted for you kept ready for you that these are ready made notes just before your exams you can refer to them okay and comprehend from them all right so let's open up the first case study now this is an important resource from tata megro hill okay which i am using for only educational purposes no commercial usage okay there are a lot of case studies which we have to cover okay by the way <coughs> this international logistics featuring american president lines international operations a complex lifeline sustained by the efficient flow of goods and services from one corner of the world to the next most of us take it for granted but what would happen if the flow should stop our global economy is dependent on the efficient and cost effective operation of trade routes neither manufacturers nor consumers are served if goods created for the international marketplace cannot reach their destination think about your wardrobe in all probability some of your clothing came from somewhere in asia How did it get here? What route brought it from the factory in Asia to your closet? Some of the world's trade routes have been in place for hundreds of years. While these routes have remained the same, the logistics for delivering goods have changed dramatically. With the advent of rail and automotive transport and mechanization and computerization, trade operations have improved dramatically. And when efficiency is increased, costs are decreased. Let's examine this efficiency by taking a closer look at the point where most imports enter into the US 
the new American President Lines Terminal, or APL Terminal for short, located at the harbor of Los Angeles. LA is currently the nation's largest port, handling an international trade volume of $170 billion a year. This volume has increased by 50% in the last five years and is expected to double over the next 25 years. To meet these increasing demands, APL invested $600 million in this new, state-of-the-art, 230-acre facility. In addition to its Los Angeles facility, APL maintains terminals in Seattle, Washington, Oakland, California, and South Kearney, New Jersey. A port in Karachi, Pakistan is also part of the APL operation. Time-based competition and least-cost producer strategies have expanded to the global marketplace. Suppliers from outside the United States must be able to produce world-class quality items, meet JIT schedules, and remain cost-effective. Technology and international logistics operations develop techniques for transporting goods as efficiently FedEx sends overnight letters. This is accomplished with the help of several new tools. 20 and 40 foot containers were designed for intermodal transportation. This means the cargo can be transferred easily from truck to ship to train and then back to truck for final delivery. The time required to ship these containers has been dramatically reduced. 20 to 25 containers can be loaded or unloaded in one hour at APL's most efficient terminal. That's important, okay? See the, observe the speed. The entire operation of offloading and unloading specifically runs in, okay? Happens within three days. Okay, that's quite very significant. Tracking technology allows shippers to accurately monitor the movement of goods around the world. New computerized systems guide the placement, storage, and transfer of goods. They are so precise that they are able to ensure that every container is placed on the correct train or truck and shipped at the required time. The Pacific Rim currently accounts for 43% of all U.S. international trade. The American point of entry for most goods is Los Angeles. Here at the new APL terminal, the efficient routing of goods has become high tech. The number one benefit for our customers using Global Gateway South rests in the efficiency of the terminal. Every day, thousands of containers arrive at its bustling docks. Each 40-foot long container can hold huge quantities of merchandise, such as 16,500 boxes of running shoes, 1,000 cases of bananas, 132,000 videotapes, or 25,000 blouses. Shipping cost must be kept as low as possible so that the consumer pays a reasonable price for the goods while the producer makes an acceptable profit. At the American President Lines Terminal, a number of high-tech innovations were installed to guarantee a rapid and smooth transit of goods through the harbor and into their final destination in the United States. Spread out over 230 acres, the terminal has enough docking space to simultaneously handle four wide-bodied container ships. Each ship is the length of two football fields and can hold 4,800 20-foot containers or 2,400 40-foot containers. This container ship, the President Garfield, has just arrived from Singapore with a shipment of computer components destined for an electronics firm in Chicago. When it arrives at the APL dock, 12 325-foot Noel Gantry cranes stand ready to offload its cargo. These electric-powered cranes are the largest in North America, weighing 1,400 tons each, with the ability to reach over 18 rows of containers. These cranes work together to rapidly unload the ship. Containers are taken from the and loaded directly onto a truck or a train. Each truck must be weighed and identified so that it can be tracked. This is accomplished by equipping the chassis of each truck with a transponder. As the truck rolls by, this device sends a message to an equipment identifier called an AEI. The AEI reads the chassis number. AEI, which is exactly working like what how your RFID works on, right? Do you understand this?
any queries please ask that's important any queries please ask we are going to see the global route pattern also okay on the truck in much the same way a supermarket scanner reads the barcode on a box of cereal and when the truck goes up onto the scale the weight is also automatically registered into the database APL uses many other technologies such as global positioning satellite or GPS in its operations with GPS APL can track its highly valued containers anywhere in the world the truck is then assigned a specific place in the terminal's vast lot where it's transferred to an outgoing train. Meanwhile, back at the APL dock, a similar computerized identification system is used to load the President Garfield, one of APL's 38 owned or leased cargo ships, with electronic equipment for shipment back to Singapore. Loading a container ship is a lot of a puzzle together. Each container must fit perfectly to both aid identification in Singapore and to evenly distribute weight throughout the ship. A stowage plan has already been assembled for the President Garfield on computer at the APL main office. This plan has then been downloaded into the APL terminal computer. The computer monitor displays a cross section of the ship. As it is loaded and placed in its appropriate spot, the computer logs in and measures its weight displacement. If necessary, the computer will signal a change in location based on the information. Back in the parking area, a of computer components from Singapore has been assigned to one of four daily outbound stack trains. The on-dock rail facility can... Okay, now this on-dock rail facility is connected with this port. Are you able to see that, right? This is a rail line. Okay, which is connected with the port. So there are four ships which can actually kind of port over here. Okay, and these, each of these ship is specifically the size of two football fields. All right, the cranes, okay, the crane hangers will automatically lift these containers, sit on the ground for temporary storage and again either move it to onto the road, uh, rail, uh, road or uh, ships, okay, or road trucks or specifically rail wagons. Okay, for inland transportation. Okay, so that's what I am using, inland transportation, which is roads, railways and ri river waterways. Okay, so there are technically four types of transportation, modes of transportation, airways, railways, waterways. Okay, fourth way is pipeline. All right, and then there are hybrid mode of transportation also. The, all this you're going to study a little later on, but I'm just exposing it to you. And these are the things what you are you would what you would be able to see is that clear okay now if you might have seen during the course of the video they told you okay uh, where where is this this is in los angeles so comes over here so this is north america all right this is south america so see the port of uh, the operation can you see that okay i'm going to maximize the screen okay and see how the Port operation work so more than 5000 journeys is specifically done on these these route only okay where good amount of magnitude okay of transportation happens can you see that so it is passing through india as well okay can you see that this is australia all right this is singapore japan okay this is singapore this is japan all right china see nice heavily loaded can you see that on this side okay majority of the shipment coming comes in from here flows across through india the south sea china and then goes through the Suez canal and then again here and comes to the us or from this end it could directly go from here till this side all right any queries any comments please ask i hope i'm making things quite very clear with you yes or no yes, Cool, thank you. Yes, I heard one verbal affirmation. Thank you. Of four daily outbound stack trains, the on dock rail facility can load and unload three full double stack trains simultaneously while handling another three full lengths of rail cars in off dock storage. 
Once fully loaded, the train departs for Chicago. The on-dock rail facility at APL's Global Gateway South taken all of what we've learned throughout our railroad operation history as a company and put it together to produce a very, very efficient rail operation. In order to swiftly pass through the Los Angeles area, now this is a double stack container. Can you see that? Each of these containers are either 20 feet containers or 40 feet containers. So now what does a container mean? Have you understood this image? This is a dry freight container, okay, which is of length of 23, 2350 millimeters, okay. This is a 20 feet container, this is a 40 feet container, and there is a 40 feet high cube container. So, these what you are seeing is 40 feet high feet containers, okay, and that to double stack. It means on this rail wagon, this is a freight corridor, okay, which is already operational in US, it's still not operational in India. Okay, in India, no double stack containers are still operational. It is going to be operational only after 2020. The infrastructure shortage, what we are speaking about always, is being built by the current Prime Minister, the dedicated freight corridor. Okay, are you aware about this? One of my PhD project was actually on dedicated freight corridor. Okay, see this, observe. So this is the freight corridor which is supposed to be built. Can you see this image? Okay exactly like this now you are seeing in terms of high, the golden quadrilateral triangles okay out of this red can you see this red zone this is already being built okay almost on 81 to 84 percent is complete this is only 60 percent complete this is the eastern freight corridor the western freight corridor okay these blue uh, things are actually in sanction okay proposal stage so this is a freight corridor which will the top and the east, the western and the eastern will be only operational completely by 2024 or 2025 okay before that are we clear okay so that's the infrastructure shortage what we have in our country all right so here already seeing double stack containers flowing okay from these port okay to inland transportation so that's known as Inland transportation means it goes inside within the land, okay, with the help of what? Roadways, railways or river waterways. Are we clear? So I'm exposing you to certain technical terms also, okay? Now the reason why I put this map, if you see these are the points where bulk of population which is actually living, okay, population living within the 100 kilometer of the coast. Can you see that? It's none, but okay. Within that, it is 30 to 70, okay? Can you see that? And there is most altered also. So if you're seeing the coastal areas, these are the submerged, which is the altered area. Okay, either submerged or they have made, so they put in some extra uh, sand to proclaim that area from the sea. Are we clear with this? Yes or no? We have been studying that in foundation core subjects also, okay? Now see that is how the topics kind of interview within each other, okay, interrelate with each other. All right. Area, our train will use the newly renovated Alameda Corridor, a rail corridor linking the Port of Los Angeles to all major rail routes. The corridor is designed to handle up to 100 trains daily while decreasing traffic delays on local roads. Once our train passes through the corridor, it's on its way non-stop to Chicago. At the same time, the field, fully loaded, leaves the APL dock and begins the journey back to Singapore. The total amount of time for unloading and reloading the ship? Less than three days. Through a mix of modern mechanized procedures, computerized support, 
and solid organization, the new APL terminal handles over 75 million metric tons of cargo per year with the ease and dependability of overnight mail delivery. In adopting a JIT philosophy for a global market, APL's efficiency is setting new standards for international logistics. Any queries, please ask. I'm going to write down certain terms in the chat box. You have to let me know their meanings. JIT, Kaizen, Kanban. Giving you two, three minutes. <clears throat> okay, very nice, Sanya. JIT, just in time. Others, Kaizen, Kanban, what are these? You have studied that in PTQM, which is Production Total Quality Management. Very nice, Rishita. Kaizen is a Japanese way of managing. Kaizen literally means continuous improvement. Okay. Yes, Bansi, very nice. Aryan, good. Lateral meaning is Kai means change zen means way of life or good life so change for good life okay who's going to tell me the meaning of the, the yes change for better very nice good we always look out for that change for better good aryan japanese way yes that's japanese philosophy of toyota production system very nice good what is Kanban? K-A-N-B-N. You might have heard about this. All right. So, so material coming internet Google. Okay. This is a card signal system which was specifically being used instead of the information system earlier within departments or engineering uh, laterals. Okay. For production. Okay. Very nice. Good. I hope it is clear. Okay, if you need any explanation, let me know. All right. So this is the dedicated trade corridor which we have spoken about as of now. I'm going to close the screen. We do not require it. So today I've ended the first case study, which is APL logistics. So here is where we have learned about something about containers. We have learned about population. The reason why population was being discussed, can anybody tell me? What is your common observation between this image and this image? What is your common observation between these two images? Come on class. You have to tell me this. It's quite very easy. What is the difference between this image, the up image, which is the international sea routes and what you're seeing in terms of the population across the sea, across the coastal areas? Coastal cities have high population density. Why? Why do they have high population? Why only on coastal cities? Think, is it because of the water? Because of the sea water? The sea water is not fit for drinking. Ideally, it should have been near the river, which is actually near the river. If you see ports, ports gain a lot of importance with respect to mode of transportation. Yes, very rightly. Employment, Aryan, very nice. Good viewpoint. Rishita, very nice. Resources, transportation, ports. So what happens? Okay, if these convenience as trade centers, trade. All right. So that's the reason why a lot of population is getting settled in coastal areas. Okay. So what we have been discussing in foundation course also, the coastal areas getting submerged. Okay. So that is a great danger which is still existing. I don't know whether you have heard about it or not. The recent report which is being submitted by, uh, I think, United Nations. 
unke with the help of third party study it shows that the earth is now heating up quite rapidly what it was earlier okay so you might see very rampant rainfalls flash floods or in coastal areas very now see last year we had only one this year we have already up till in the month we have already seen two uh, cyclones right one cyclone and one good uh, three days rain together all right so this is going to happen more and more on coastal in coastal areas believe me okay so what you are learning you need to know and understand what is going to happen okay that's the reason why you are learning this so that supply chain dry weight containers the advantages of containers this i am going to send it out to you and this is also there scripted in the notes what are the containers what you saw basic advantage of container is it is standardization gives a flexibility of movement okay the costing to move the container is much more easy i don't know whether you are aware about it or not before the containers which are being used for transportation there were pallets which are being used so all the items will be moved on pallets then the pallet is moved from the land to the ship and then the, again the containers were being moved out from the pallet okay i don't know whether i'm making sense okay old ways of ship porting okay or loading see these are ships which can actually they can sink they can topple okay see here instead of using containers they were using people to move the products in inside inside ship okay porting with the help of pallets yeah so the items were being placed on these pallets and then they were moved inside the ship with the help of a crane all right like this okay since like this so instead of a container so they came out with i think who was the person who actually coined the word container i think this was some name which is philips i believe give me a second containerization the first person i think it was philip from us Malcolm McLean. Oh my God! How did I forget this name? Yes, Malcolm McLean. Okay, which was in USA in 1956. The first standard shipping container was invented and patented by Malcolm McLean. Okay, let's put this out. I tend to keep on forgetting it. Since we are learning about logistics, we need to know this. Okay, I'll put it up here. Okay, the shipping container was invented by and patented by Malcolm McLean. Okay, I used to remember this his name. You know, if you might have seen Die Hard movie, have you seen Die Hard movie? Bruce Willis. Okay, the name the uh, the name of I think. Give me a second. Die Hard character names. John McLean. Okay, so that is how I used to remember this name. Okay, McLean. All right. So we can definitely keep certain things. Okay, combine certain things and remember. All right. I hope it is making sense. So this, uh, see, always remember, use images for you to make. the notes so that automatically you will be able to remember these things without even okay so the photographic memory usage technique is being used here all right any queries please ask any queries please ask
see, go through the usage of containers, so advantage, drawbacks. You should see standardization, okay, which is possible with the help of containers, 40 feet containers, 20 feet containers. All right, flexibility, commodities, manufactured goods, liquid, liquids and refrigerated goods. So there can be provision be made inside the containers for refrigeration also. Okay, the cost, lowest transport cost, economies of scale advantage when containers are specifically being moving together. Okay, velocity, faster, fast transmission, operation, okay, and low turnaround times. All right. Okay, warehousing, it becomes quite very easy. It contains inherent warehouse also. They are simpler, less expensive packaging. Okay, stacking capability is quite very easy. Okay, we are going to see this. Majorly how containers are being stacked on ship. Okay, since I have not covered that with the other class, we will do that when the time comes in doing transportation and material handling of containers. Okay, safety and security, contents unknown to carriers, reduce spoilage and losses. Okay, what is the drawback? The site constraint. For containers to move, it requires a good amount of space. Okay, so for this answer, there are many containers which are specifically also being used in certain industries. There's a good capital intensive. So it is made up of metal for which, okay, it is costly plus it requires capital in uh, kind of uh, handling infrastructure which is being used to handle these containers. All right, stacking complexity of arrangement of containers both on ground and on modes. On modes means what? Different modes of travel, whether roadways, they are being tracked on, uh, uh, kind of stacked on trucks. Okay, railways, they are being stacked on rail wagons. All right, there's complexity. Complexity means what? The, the items which has to move first, okay? Accordingly, as per the FIFO movement, the containers have to be stopped, okay? Or sometimes on the basis of presence of moisture, presence of pressure, presence of temp uh, temperature, the containers need to be stacked accordingly. So there is good amount of complexity, complexity which is also involved in stacking the containers, okay? Repositioning, which is divergence between production and consumption, repositioning 20% of all containers. If you would see the containers, whenever they are being stored, okay, or repositioned, on the wagon or on the truck they need to be very carefully done okay theft and losses high value goods vulnerable to thefts particularly between terminal and final destination okay but containers still give a good security okay illicit trade yes illicit traffic of goods drugs and weapons as well as for illegal immigration many movies you have seen okay that people women okay drugs and goods are being illicitly transported from one container to the other, one ship to the other, one country to the other, because containers can conceal these items, these people like this. Can you see that? Artifacts. Okay. They are being also being shipped through the containers. Can you observe this? Not only this, a lot of other items are also being poached. Specifically used in drugs, huh? by the way. Huge. Concealing these drugs within the containers. Observe this. 
illicit trade from Lebanon. Okay. Particularly disturbing visuals. Yes, I understand. But with respect to trade, trade of illicit drugs are also possible and it's made very quite very easy. All right. Cool. Okay. These all part we're going to do next time in my next class. Okay. We have covered this much portion with the other class. So I'm going to rest. Give it a rest today. We're going to take it a little easy. Let me download your attendance for the day. Okay, so we have covered the case study. It's almost around 10:40 now. What did we do with the other class? Oh yes, I actually showed them. Uh, Swayam uh, portal for a good amount of time, and we also saw. In terms of uh, Udemy, also we saw some courses. You have any queries? Class, please ask. 